Well, blessings and greetings to everyone who's taken the time out of their morning to listen to a message from God's Word this morning. It's always a blessing to be able to get on here and to teach the Word of God, to, to spread the truth about what God has taught within the Scriptures that He wants us to know. And today we're going to be discussing a very, very, very important topic. Um, not so much of a topic, but we're going to be speaking about God Himself. One of these days we'll be able to meet with each other again. God had other plans this morning. As everyone already knows, we can't meet this morning because of weather conditions. But Lord willing, if it's in the Lord's sovereign will, we will be able to meet next Sunday without any worry about the road conditions. Last thing we want to do is get out on the road and end up in a ditch. We all know how important it is to meet with each other um, in person for edification, for mutual edification, for the fellowship of the church, for the building up of one another. But there are times where weather interferes, sickness interferes, and last thing God wants us to do is get on on the road and get hurt. But I pray that this message is a blessing to you. I want to go ahead and apologize in advance if you hear anything in the background. Um, I am in my home, and I have children, as everyone knows, and I do have um, a few dogs as well. So Lord willing, they will be quiet. But I pray, like I said, that this is a blessing to you and that you have a blessed week, that you let your light shine this week. I know that many of us have many prayers, many concerns, many things on our heart. We're all going through different things in life. We're all we're all approached with many trials and tribulations. It seems like we go through many ups and downs, um, whether it's day to day, week to week, year to year. Um, But God is with us every step of the way. He never leaves us. But that doesn't take away the fact that some of us are hurting inside. Some of us are grieving inside. Some of us are not having a good year thus far. God wants us to know that everything that happens in the life of believers to those who love God, everything happens for their good. Even when it doesn't seem like that, God says that all things work together for the good of those who love him. Remembering that is so important. But this morning, as you've already noticed the topic, uh, the title of today's message, it's the ever-present trinity. Who here likes to shop? I'm not much of a shopper, but when I do shop, I normally always shop for three things. When I go into Walmart, if you ever see me into Walmart, you can bet your bottom dollar that if you look in my cart, that you will see at least one of the three items or all three, depending on if the store has it or not. You will see a salad, a pasta salad, or a protein bar. These are the things that I like to get when I go shopping. However, when Laura, my wife, shops, She normally, when she goes into Walmart and when she comes out, she normally always comes out with at least one or two cases of water, different types of vegetables, different types of food, um, new clothing for our kids. And of course, within our household right now, we can't forget the diapers and the baby wipes because if we forget the diapers and the baby wipes, then we're in deep, deep trouble. But sometimes if we're lucky, we'll be going down the aisle of Walmart, wherever we're at, and we will pass an aisle that's selling candles. And we love candles. My wife and I, we really enjoy candles. And we'll come upon this candle that just smells like a bed of roses. It just it smells delightful. And we'll end up buying that too. But whether it's a candle or a dozen of eggs or a case of water, all of these things have something in common with each other. And that is they all have three different parts which make up one whole. They all have three different parts which make up one whole. For example, if you have a candle, notice that your candle, a candle that's in glass, to be more specific, that's held by glass. Notice that your candle is made up of three distinctive parts. When you receive the candle that you buy, it comes in glass, you have the candle inside, and you have the wick. There are three distinct parts, but yet they make up one candle. 
Likewise, if you were to buy a dozen of eggs, you would take the egg out of the carton. You would look at the egg. You would examine the egg. And you would notice that you have a shell, the egg white, and the yolk. There are three distinct parts of the egg, but yet they all make up one egg. Likewise, when each of us become a child of God, we received the Trinity. Three distinct persons, but yet which make up one God. God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This morning and throughout the next few weeks, I want to speak about someone I don't hear much conversation about today, and that is the latter part of the Trinity, which is the Holy Spirit. It is in the joyous moments of life, and even more so in the hardest moments of life, where we feel like we're walking through the darkest of valleys, that we need to remember the Holy Spirit. However, not just to remember the Holy Spirit, but also to know who the Holy Spirit is. So when it comes to the Holy Spirit, there are many questions we should be asking ourselves. But for this morning, we'll only ask ourselves two questions concerning the Holy Spirit. Questions such as, what is the Holy Spirit? And what does the Holy Spirit exactly do? And trust me, there are many, many, many more questions we will address in the next uh, coming weeks about the Holy Spirit. But for this morning, these two will suffice as they will take up the remainder of our time this morning. And I'm telling you, uh, this could have been a much, much longer sermon. But for the sake of everyone else, assuming that we would meet each other in per- with each other in person today. I didn't want to hold everyone hostage for hours. This is a topic. This is a subject that we could speak about for a long time because the Bible has a lot to say about the third person of the Trinity. That is the Holy Spirit. So let's begin with question number one. What is the Holy Spirit? What is the Holy Spirit? Now, when, when I said just a minute ago that there was someone in which I'd like to talk about this morning, there is a specific word that I said on purpose to try to draw your attention. Can you take, can you take a guess on what that word was? Think about it for a second. The word that I purposefully said was someone, someone. When we ask ourselves the question, what is the Holy spirit? We must understand that we're asking the question with the with the wrong phraseology. Rather than asking what the Holy Spirit is, we should be asking who the Holy Spirit is. Say that again. Rather than asking what the Holy Spirit is, we should be asking who the Holy Spirit is. Because the Holy Spirit is not simply an impersonal, and let me say this slowly, the Holy Spirit is not simply an impersonal force or an influence over the life of a Christian, nor is he just a concept we find talked about within the scriptures, or even someone who is part of the Trinity. Rather, the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person we see talked about within the scriptures. To be more precise, I want you to turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 10 to 11. Now, I, if you have your Bibles, feel free to turn with me. You'll hear my pages in my Bible uh, turn in the background, but we're going to be doing a lot of reading because this is such an important topic. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 to 11, the Apostle Paul says this, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 to 11. For to us, God revealed them through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the Spirit of God. So what we learn here, when it comes to asking who the Holy Spirit is, we learn that the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, 
is an intelligent person. He is an intelligent person. He willfully and purposefully, with distinct aim, searches out not just all things. He not only searches out all things, but he also searches the very depths of God. And we're told that it is the Holy Spirit alone that knows the thoughts of God. So again, we need to understand that the Holy Spirit is not a what, he's a who. And who he is, is an intelligent person. He is an intelligent person. Now, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. We learn something else about the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30 reads this way. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So here we learn that the Holy Spirit is a person who has feelings. Just as a child, let me put it this way, just as a child has the capability of grieving the hearts of a mother and a father when they choose to make decisions that they ought not, Likewise, we also, as children of God, are capable of grieving the Holy Spirit when we make choices that we ought not make as the children of God. Now, this word grieve within verse 30 of Ephesians chapter 4 here is used in a way to, and well, let me be specific. If you look up that Greek word here used for grieve, it's pronounced as lopio. Lopio. And what this word can mean is, quote, to experience a deep amount of emotional pain, such as sadness or severe sorrow, or to become distressed. So when it comes to the person of the Holy Spirit, we need to understand that the Holy Spirit is extremely hurt. He is extremely pained. When we choose to live a life that is contrary to the one, to to the one our Heavenly Father wants us to live. This now leads me to the second question we should be asking ourselves when it comes to the Holy Spirit. What is it exactly the Holy Spirit does? We understand now that the Holy Spirit is a person. He's not a what. He's not just a concept within the scripture. He's not an impersonal force in it or an influence over the life of the Christian. That's not all he is. He is a person. He is an intelligent person. He is a person who has feelings. But what is it exactly this person, the third part of the Trinity, does? What does the Scriptures, what does the Word of God tell us that he does? Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, I'm going to be blunt. And I'll put it out there. We could be we could be all over the scriptures today concerning this because the Holy Spirit does so much within the life of believers. And again, due to time constraints, I've only chosen a few things to speak about concerning the Holy Spirit and what he does. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11. We read this. Actually, let's back up to verse 4, and we'll read to 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 to 11. Now, there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are a variety of ministries in the same Lord. There are varieties of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, and to another the effecting of miracles, and to another prophecy, and to another the distinguishing of spirits, and to another various kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. 
verse 11, but one in the same spirit works all things, distributing to each one individually just as he wills. So again, going back to the question, what does the Holy Spirit do? Here, we learn that the Holy Spirit is in the business of bestowing specific gifts upon each member of the body of Christ. Specifically, in verse 11, let's read that again. Verse 11, in the New American Standard, we read, But one in the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually, just as he wills. We read that the Holy Spirit is the one. It's the Holy Spirit who chooses which gift to distribute to the people of God. So when it comes to what does the Holy Spirit do, the Holy Spirit gives gifts to his people. But we we learn that the Holy Spirit has his own desire, or might we say his own will, in choosing who receives what gifts. And rest assured, every single one of you who is a child of God today, listening, to this message from the Word of God, you have been given a gift from the Holy Spirit. Now, what is your gift? Now, that's for you to figure out. That's for you to examine. And pay attention to what people say to you. Pay attention to the compliments that people give you concerning um, some of the gifts that are given within the Scriptures. Because maybe that's a sign that you should continue to pursue that gift. If If you're gifted in showing hospitality, because that's a gift too. You read Romans 12. Maybe you are good at teaching. Maybe you are good at many other gifts. Pursue that gift. Pursue it. Pursue that gift, because that could be a calling on your life. Also, turn with me to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Verse 26, we learn something else that the Holy Spirit does. John chapter 14, verse 26. says, But the Helper, the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, this is Jesus speaking, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. That was so good. Let's read it again. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and will bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. So the Holy Spirit, concerning what he does, what he can do, he is someone who is able to teach and who is able to remind God's people of spiritual truths. Let me ask you, have you ever been in a situation where you've been presented with a choice to make and a scripture comes to mind. Say you're 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 presented with a choice, kind of like Joshua was. Choose this day who you will serve. Have you ever been presented with a choice like that? A choice to sin, to serve your selfish desires, to serve, to serve your flesh, or to serve God, to serve the Holy Spirit, to be guided by the flesh or to be guided by the Spirit. Have you ever been reminded of a scripture encouraging you not to take the way of the flesh? Give credit to the Holy Spirit for that if you have, because it is he who is at work within you. Because without him, we cannot understand the things of God. Without the Holy Spirit, you and I cannot understand the things of God. First Corinthians two, uh, chapter 2 speaks of that. And one more scripture I want to mention this morning, and then this will lead to the conclusion of today's message. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I want us to read Romans chapter 8, verse 26 to 27. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 to 27. We read the following. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he he who searches the hearts 
knows what the mind of the spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Powerful, loving, caring. Such a caring and loving thing for the spirit to do for his people. We, we learn here that the Holy Spirit, when we are weak, when we are weak, the Holy Spirit is the one who intercedes for us in our time of need. The Holy Spirit is purposefully, understand, the Holy Spirit is purposefully looking out for each and every one of us in our time of need. During those dark seasons of our life where we feel like everything is going wrong and that the light at the end of the tunnel just isn't anywhere to be found, the Holy Spirit wants us to understand that He is there with us every step of the way, interceding for us with groanings that are too deep for words. Why? Because the scripture says this is according to. To the will of God. I cannot begin to emphasize enough that we barely, this morning, we barely even begin scratching the surface here of who the Holy Spirit is and what his purpose is within the life of every believer here listening this morning. Um, there's so much more that he does, there's so much more to who he is. There's so much more that can be said about the Holy Spirit. But as we leave here today, I, I could say as we end this um, sermon, this message this morning, I want us to under, understand and remember the truths we've learned today. Remember, I've said, I said months ago that people tend to only remember 86% of what they hear in a sermon, uh, or, or they're 80, 86% less likely to remember, so I don't know. I'm probably getting that wrong. Anyways, my point is I want you to pay attention. I want you to pay attention to what we've learned today. So number one, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. We all know that. That's, that's Christianity 101. Remember that he is an intelligent person who is genuinely involved within the life of believers. And remember that when you are presented with a choice to sin or to obey God, if you choose the route of sin, he will be grieved. He will, ex he will be extremely pained by your decision. And the Holy Spirit is in the business of giving gifts to believers. And these gifts that were given are not just given to us in a way of saying, here, here's your gift. We're all given gifts to use for the edification of the church. I have been given the gift of teaching you. I am not to do this as a selfish thing. I'm not to be selfish with this gift. I am to use this gift for the edification of the body of Christ, for the building up of the body of Christ, equipping the saints to the work of ministry. That is my job. That is my job to encourage you. I'm to minister to you. Likewise, the gifts that you have are to be used for the edification of the body of Christ. We also learn of the Spirit that he is able to bring to remembrance the sacred teachings of Scripture during trials and tribulations, and that he is the Spirit who searches all things, even the depths of God. And it is he alone who knows the thoughts of God. Be the reason why we know the will of God is because of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has communicated to us the will of God. He used the apostles. He inspired the apostles. The scriptures that we read are not man-made. The things that we read in scripture are from God himself. We read the scriptures. We can read the scriptures with confidence, knowing for certain that these are the very words of God. Yes, the Holy Spirit used men by God's grace. But these are the words of the Holy Spirit himself. These are the words of God. We, we also know that, well, this is kind of a side note, we really didn't discuss this. 
But the reason why the Holy Spirit is called holy is because he is the Spirit of God himself. He is literally the Spirit of God. That means he is perfect. Hence, the reason why he's called the Holy Spirit. God is perfect. Therefore, the Spirit of God must be perfect. Throughout the scripture, as if you were paying attention to John chapter 14, you'll, you heard that he was called the Comforter. The Holy Spirit is given many names within the scriptures. He's called the Comforter, the Counselor, the Advocate, the Convictor of Sin. He's called a guide, and there's so much more he's called. The Holy Spirit isn't just someone who was simply on the sidelines watching God the Father and Jesus, our Lord and Savior, do everything. I think that's really important for us to understand. Excuse me. I hear a lot being talked about God the Father and Jesus, which is great, which is wonderful. But the Holy Spirit is, is just as crucial to the Christian life. You have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three distinct persons, one God. So the Holy Spirit is not on the sidelines, just letting God the Father and Jesus do everything. The Holy Spirit is just as much involved within the life of each and every one of us, just as much as God the Father and God the Son is. The next week, we will continue our quest on understanding the Holy Spirit by discussing the work of the Holy Spirit in our salvation. I look forward to this one. This is an exciting one. I look forward to sharing with you what God's word has to teach about this and learning more about the Holy Spirit. So next week, just to make it clear, just to repeat myself, we will be discussing the work of the Holy Spirit um, when it comes to our salvation. Follow the Spirit's leading this week. Follow the Spirit's leading throughout the rest of your life. The flesh will pop its ugly head up at us when it it when we do things that are contrary to the flesh. When we when we are guided by the Spirit, we are following God's commandments. We are being the disciples that we need to be, and we walk in fellowship with God. In my personal studies, I've been reading through First John, and the Apostle John's very clear. The Holy Spirit is very clear. If we say that we have fellowship with God, but yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Put it this way. If I said that I was on the Indiana Pacers basketball team, but yet I didn't even play basketball, I would be a liar and I wouldn't be telling the truth. Likewise, if I say that I have fellowship with God, but yet I'm not walking in the ways that he wants me to, I lie and I do not practice the truth. Follow the Spirit. The Spirit is involved in your life. Fight against sin by the power that the Holy Spirit will give you to overcome sin. In Christ Jesus, you have overcome the world. It is through Jesus Christ, the one who holds the keys to death and Hades, the beginning and the end, the Alpha, the Omega. It is through Him that we are righteous. It is through Him, faith alone, in Him, by grace alone, that we are saved and made right with God. We thank God for this and we thank God for the Holy Spirit. I pray that this has been a blessing to you and be careful throughout the rest of this week, especially with the weather. God bless.